Welcome to the Sanity Project podcast, the place for internet technology professionals whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We are here to provide solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, I'm Joanne Victoria, the I Know What Works coach, and I'm the author of seven books, including Lighting Your Path, How to Create the Life You Want, and Pushy for a Moment, Instant Solutions to Everyday Challenges. I'm also the host of the Sanity Project podcast, and I partner with IT professionals in telecommunications, technology, entertainment, and mass media industries whose work-life balance plan has imploded. The Sanity Project podcast is a platform for experts in the personal development and IT communities to share their wisdom, expertise, and solutions that will help the IT professional live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. And our guest today is going to help our listeners in all of those areas. Our guest today is Jennifer Noel Taylor. She is the author of the upcoming book called Spiritual and Broke, How to Stop Struggling with Money and Live Your Purpose. If you go to her website at spiritualandbroke.com, you will be able to download the first three chapters of her new book for free as a great gift from Jennifer. Jennifer Noel Taylor is an energy healing practitioner, self-help motivator, and the CEO of Quantum Touch, Inc. She has dedicated her life work to helping people discover the healing power of their love. As CEO of Quantum Touch, she continues to promote optimal wellness by helping people connect more deeply to their love. Not only is love the basis of all healing, but it is also the guiding force behind business itself. Her business practices include spiritually rewarding jobs, loving service to the world, environmental responsibility, and financial abundance. Quantum Touch has grown from a regional U.S. company to a multinational corporation. So Jennifer is going to start by talking about the most common blocks to abundance. Welcome to the show, Jennifer Noel Taylor. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Um, Yes. So over the last uh, 15 years, I've been running a company called Quantum Touch, and we teach energy medicine around the world. And one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of people in our community Um, are struggling with money. And so they're doing what they love. They want to provide service to humanity. They want to do healing work or coaching work. And yet I've met a lot of people who are living out of their car. I've actually met people who are living out of their car or couch surfing. They can't afford a place to live or their credit card is charged to the max and they use it to fund their mission and they, their mission is not paying them back. I've just seen this. And in my own journey, Myself, uh, I quit my quote unquote real job to do energy medicine and I dug myself into a hundred thousand dollar business loan. And uh, by the way, that loan wasn't funding growth, it was just to meet, you know, buy office supplies and meet payroll. I had uh, my credit card charged up to thirty five thousand dollars of unsecured debt. I had a uh, interest only mortgage on a house that I couldn't afford long-term because that, that mortgage eventually uh, balloons in your face. Um, and I had a car payment. So I was just, just drowning in, in debt. And this all happened after I quit my real job to do what I love. And so here's what I've noticed is that everyone that I've encountered who's struggling with money, we were, uh, operating under a belief set that wasn't working. And and here's what I, you know, what my belief set was. So I was under the impression that if you do what you love, the money will come. So what I was doing was I was just waiting for the money to come. And while I was waiting for the money to come, I was angry. I was mad that the money wasn't showing up and I was mad at God, mad at the universe. I felt like a martyr for the cause. And my dialogue with the universe was, Where's the money? Why hasn't the money shown up? I'm so, I'm so upset about this because here I am. I'm doing service to the world. What's going on? And so my biggest block 
was I was feeling like a victim and a martyr for my cause. And the thing that why this gets in the way is that when we're feeling like a victim, when we're feeling like a martyr, that emotional energy that we're projecting into the world is incompatible with abundance. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because everything in the world is energy. So that's what I believe. I believe that the world is composed of energy and it's supported by quantum physics where it says everything in the world is energy. And then our reality is a reflection of our energy. So everything going on in your life is a reflection of the energy you're projecting into the world. And this, this is what we teach with quantum touch and with healing and with alternative medicine, that your health issues are a projection of what's going on within. And the same thing was happening with my money. You know, my money, my lack of abundance was a projection of the energy that I was, of the energy within. And when I realized and took full responsibility for that, that yes, I actually did create my money problems. I actually am responsible for it. I don't, I'm not waiting for God to fix it. I'm not waiting for the universe to fix it. I need to fix it. So I wasn't waiting for the law of attraction to fix it. I need to fix it, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that just got me. It's like so true because, well, you know, if I'm just practicing the law of attraction, I want money. Give it to me, damn it. <laughs> That's my, that was my attitude. And, yep. and you know, I, I now realize, like, I'm, I'm ashamed of it now, but um, – Back when I was struggling with money, you know, we were teaching the law of attraction, how it applies to your health so that we create a reality, we create our health, we were teaching empowerment when it comes to health. And yet at the same time, and this is what I call in my book, my secret shame, I wasn't able to apply that to money. And so I had this disconnect, you know, almost a hypocrisy in my consciousness saying, yes, you create your health, but when it comes to money, nope, nope, nope. That's not, that doesn't apply. Just, you know, move on, move on. Don't look at my money. And um, I called that my secret shame because it, it was a level of hypocrisy in my life. So anyways, um, when I finally got over that and realized that I don't, I don't just sit here and wait for the money to show up, um, that was the big turnaround for me. So what did you do? Okay, so the first thing is, that, that realization that, okay, now I need to own it. And I, I started to look like what within me is creating this, this debt. And so I did, I did three things. The first one was worthiness. So basically I, I had this belief that somehow I didn't deserve money that somehow I was inferior or somehow I wasn't providing service, that I wasn't a perfect person. So how can I deserve money for my services? So here I am talking about healing, but I'm not perfect. So why should people pay me for this? And as a consequence, I was undercharging severely for, you know, in our, in our prices, in our business, um, just, I was not charging enough money to make ends meet. And I see this a lot. You know, sometimes I talk to coaches or healers and, you know, well, how, do you, how much do you charge per hour? Well, I charge $40 per hour. Oh, geez. Excuse yeah. Me. Well, I used to live in Marin County, California, and I don't know if you know or not, but that was an also a haven of healers. And yet at the time, and I think it's still ongoing throughout the world, is they felt as healers that they, they were doing this you know, this was their gift to the universe. They wouldn't charge money because they didn't deserve to be paid because they were just sharing their own whatever healing methods that they used. And it was like, it's a job, people. It's a job. Mm -hmm. And then it's about healing or it's healing, but it's a job. It's a business. You have to charge for your business. But, but I've been in the same place. Mm -hmm. You know, similar, not all of it, but where I'm going, well, this is, that's okay. I don't have to charge for this. I'll just deal with it. You know, somehow the universe will provide quote unquote, and it doesn't always work like that. Precisely. That was exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to undercharge severely in our business and, and then somehow the universe is going to provide, but 
it, it, it doesn't work that way because when you don't charge very much money for your services, there's no income coming in. And um, I call this the free love argument because people believe in the healing arts that, you know, this, this love that we're, we're giving our clients should be free because it comes from God. So technically, you know, we're not really providing anything. We're just providing love, which is, which is free. And, and so why should we charge? And um, that's what I call the free love argument. And I like to liken it to um, the produce section at the supermarket. So you go in there and technically all this stuff grows on trees for free, you know, the oranges and the apples and, and everything. So why is the supermarket charging for the produce when you could go out and get it for free? Right. And I've actually, uh, had somebody in a supermarket actually say that to the produce manager, this all should be free. It's all from God. And, um, that the, the real, the reality of it is yes. If you had your own apple orchard, you could go eat all the apples you want for free. But really what you're paying for is, is somebody had to, to pick all the fruit, package it all up, ship it to the store or transport it to the store and then unpack it and put it on the shelf. And then the, the space for the store to and somebody uh, have had the to, shelf. <laughs> and somebody had to plant the tree to begin with because that's not done by God. That's done by man. Mm -hmm. God gives you the God gives you the tools to work with and it's up to you to make those tools work. But, Precisely. So it starts I oh I I understand. I experienced that too living in Marin and, and Sonoma counties where people expected, well why are you charging for this? You know, it's but that's a mentality that's it's just an attitude that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Because we live in a commercial world. Mhm. Mm and and it's interesting that that attitude still permeates oh, the energy. Yes. You know, it, oh. it permeates, right? Oh yes, it's still huge. And mm -hmm. um, I, I've experienced uh, with some people on Facebook who popped out of that the, the debt, the feeling of lack of worth, and so on. And that you're still to give us the other steps to, but um, they just felt as though they didn't, you know, this is my, this is my gift. I have to give my gift away free, you know, but you don't see the surgeon who has the gift of, of uh, specificity and the ability to cut open and remove bad parts that are in the body. He, you know, he, he, he or she might acknowledge it as a gift that they had to back up with, you know, 14 years of education, but they're going to charge for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of us who are doing coaching and healing practices have had tons of education and workshops and certifications and and a, a whole list of credentials and and yet for whatever reason the, the surgeon can charge you know thousands and thousands upon thousands of dollars and and yet we're squeamish about charging you know more than a hundred dollars for an hour of, of healing work and and it just it it's one of the things that I really had to overcome. To well, also, I don't mean to interrupt, but that's part of, I, I am the great interrupter. <laughs> what people need to realize, they're not charging $100 an hour or $500 an hour. They're charging for the years of experience and education that you have gone through. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, there's no value, to you, there's no dollar value to that. It's just a choice. And you can choose to charge $1,000, but it's not for the hour it's for the hours and years that you've put in to learn your craft yeah and and I also like to think of it too is you know look at the value that we're providing so for example uh, energy medicine is really good with with pain relief so there's a lot of people that come to us who uh, have tried everything and they're still in chronic pain and a lot of times just an hour or so of, of energy work can resolve and get that person out of pain. And if you think about what's that value of getting that person out of pain, or if you're a life coach, what's the value of repairing a marriage? What's it's, it's precious. I mean, you can't really put a dollar value on it. And yet to imagine that people are charging so little to provide such a precious and valuable service is, is really, you know, we need, we need to own that, that value that we're, that we're providing to people. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't want to work with anyone who didn't charge a significant amount of money for their service because that means that their lack of worthiness could transfer to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's, and another thing that I also like to say is that 
two more, two more points on this is, is one, um, I believe that commitment on the part of the client creates value. So if a client is, is not paying very much money for your services, they're not valuing the work themselves. So for example, if a client is paying a uh, hundred dollars for a personal trainer, you bet that person's going to show up at the gym on time. Right. But if the personal trainer says, well, I'll just give you a session, you know, I'll give you a bunch of sessions for free. Um, typically what I've seen is when something's free, people tend to show up late. They don't value it. They don't commit to the process. And so really that fee actually helps the client commit to the process of, of their own healing or, or their own work. And so that's one thing that we actually are providing value to the client by charging a fee. Mm-hmm. And there's also a lack of respect if the um, healer or, you know, body trainer, whatever, doesn't charge. You, you know, if they don't think they're good enough, how will you think they're good enough? And how will you benefit from them giving you this, even though it's a gift? You know, there's, it's, it's very cr- at cross purposes, Mm-hmm. It just it's not it's not clear. It just supports your lack of self worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the, and speaking of self worth, so this is another thing I've noticed. Um, some people have are trying to prove their worth by doing sessions rather than focusing on providing value. And I think that can be sometimes really easy to do. I know I was. I mean, like you want to feel like well, if I don't feel worthy what better way to prove my worth than to be attached to the outcome when working with the client as if it, if the client, you know, receives healing, then suddenly I'm worthy as a healer. So I like to make that distinction between, you know, our goal isn't to prove our worth, but it's to really just provide value. And so if we stop, if we get out of that idea of using our practice to, to create worthiness, then it just transports it into a different realm. So the whole self worth thing was it was a big uh, you know hurdle for me, and and uh, I still work at it. But as soon as I started you know raising prices in our business and, and saying yes, you know this is really valuable, it, it started to turn my money thing around. Good. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the other thing that that was getting in my way was. Um, so I have undercharging, uh, my tendency to overspend. And the reason why I overspent, it, it came back to that worthiness factor because really I would spend money on, on things that I didn't need. And one of my favorite books of all time uh, has this term called uh, Gazingas Pen. So this book called Your Money or Your Life uh, coined this term Gazingas Pen to mean that thing that we buy that we don't need, but it's just like we buy it on automatic pilot. So for example, my Gazingas pen was, was clothes. I had a lot of clothes in my closet that were brand new with the price tag on them. I would just buy it on automatic pilot, whether or not I loved it or not, just because I was searching for something. I was trying to fulfill this, this need within myself through outside means. And, um, I, I re- recognized my own gazingas pens when I started to do a decluttering of my life and I would look through all my stuff and said, why do I have five copies of the same sweater? <laughs> I understand. It's like how many black, well, not for you in Hawaii, but how many pairs of black pants do you really need? <laughs> any woman, any woman who lives on the mainland's wardrobe would, you know, be like that. Yeah, I, and and I had to do some soul searching. I said, "Why am I buying all this stuff that I I mean it that still has the price tag on it? It's a year old and it's still sitting here with the price tag on it." And you know, I it it kind of came back to I was buying it to soothe my emotions, and I was buying it so I could be more attractive to men, and I was buying it out of this feeling of of lack of love in my life. I was trying to buy love. Um, you know, through the, through the approval of others or, or through the approval of men, I was, or just, you know, I having a bad day. So I just go, you know, retail therapy to soothe my emotions. So instead of buying things that I actually loved, I was trying to buy love. And once I really had kind of that wake up call and realized what I was doing, I was naturally able to curtail my spending without really feeling any difference in my life. So 
now whenever I'm tempted to buy something, I, I ask myself, I pause and ask, you know, do I love this or am I buying it for some other, some other reason? And uh, that actually naturally seems to curtail my, my tendency to overspend on stuff that I don't use. Some of the things, um, one of the tricks, and I say it's a trick that I've discovered that works for me when I might think that, well, this isn't something I want, is that if I buy something, I have to let go of something in my closet. Mm. And, and that um, it's very good for good people at Goodwill, or if I can sell it, that's fine, but that takes a lot of work, so I just give it away. But if there, if I'm buying something new, I have to release um, a hanger in my closet. Nice. And that just uh, simplifies the process for me, you know. So seasonally, which I go two seasons here, winter and whatever else we're allowed to have. Um, but we do have a nice spring and summer. In fact, today's a very sunny day. But I just release a hanger. I just, you know, that's what I do. It's the only way that works for me so that I don't, number one, I don't have an overcrowded closet. And then number two, I'm just, you know, not being selfish because I just mm -hmm. felt part of me was being selfish, but I don't need that, all that in my closet. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that that's really great because you have a pause, a moment of consciousness. First of all, does buying this new thing, you know, is releasing something worth buying the new thing? I think I would yes. probably think that way, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what are you going to have to give up, Joanne? So, uh -huh. and and I think that's great because it's that when we get off of automatic pilot, you know, just instead of buying things automatically, when we get off of automatic pilot and actually have a moment of, of consciousness, I, I think it's a lot like food. You know, so I think um, I think all of us um, tend to sometimes eat things on automatic pilot. You know, we've had a rough day, and the first thing we go to is supply of chocolate and um it just can be like this automatic thing maybe we don't even enjoy the chocolate anymore and, and we're just eating it out of automatic kind of an automatic response mm -hmm. and i think if we just pause and say all right i had one square of chocolate and that was really awesome but i don't need the whole bar you know eating the rest of it's not going to feel as as fun i might get sick and the same <laughs> with clothes or, or whatever it is that I think people tend to buy. I know some people that tend to buy electronics on automatic pilot. Um, I know a, a, a friend of mine who just has this room full of camera equipment and just all kinds of stuff, stuff I don't even know what it is. And that's his Gazingas pen. He doesn't use it. It just, that's what he buys when he wants to feel better. And so I just think like you, like you mentioned that moment of awareness of why am I really buying this? Yeah, that's 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 the challenge is being aware. Uh, people don't necessarily have to be spiritual consciously in order to be unconsciously spiritual. As long as that part of that unconsciousness is mindfulness, it's like, do I really need this? Do I really want to eat that? You know, why am I making my spare bedroom into a resale room? You know, a lot of questions that people can ask that are, from my point of view, spiritually based, but not necessarily overtly spiritual. You know, they they would most of the people I know who do things like that would deny that they were spiritual in the mac macro view, but you know, they are, if they look at things going, Hmm, I think I've got a little too much of one thing and let's get rid of it or the, let's have the willingness to get rid of it. So mm -hmm. I want to remind people that they can get the first three chapters of your new book, spiritual and broke, how to stop struggling with money and live your purpose at spiritualandbroke.com and you can also find Jennifer at facebook.com slash Jennifer Noel Taylor and she's also on Twitter and for those of you who are uh, listening to this from my website or from my uh, 
the Sanity Project podcast Facebook fan page. You can see the link there. And those of you who are just hearing it on a download, which I hope you are, um, just go to spiritualandbroke.com. You'll find everything you need there. So, Jennifer, give us one last or one or two last things that people can do today. Let's talk about something they can do right now that is as pain-free as possible because people don't like pain. They don't like hard work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to give them something that is simple and or easy to just do now after they finish listening to your recording. Okay. So one of the ways that I dove in, you know, once I got out of this victim thing is I started in a very pain-free way, which was cleaning out my closet. And the reason why I think that's the least painful way to dive in is because it, it's kind of fun, I think, to, to clean out something and to, to get rid of stuff. And just and it and it turned into an exercise of self-awareness because when I cleaned out something, I'm like, wow, what what is going on with my my spending habits? So to me, that was the easiest way to, to dive into turning things around because cleaning out something can be kind of fun and, and relatively painless, at least I think so. So that's, that's probably where I would start. And I think for the guys listening out there who go, I don't need to clean out my closet, uh, check your garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just check your garage. You know what I'm talking about. How many screwdrivers do you really need? Um, you have a, a garage filled with stuff that if you went out and cleaned it up and got rid of the duplicates, triplicates, et cetera, you know, that would be a good thing for your, for your body, for your mind, for your spirit, and for your soul. Well, I thank you, Jennifer Noel Taylor, for being here today. And I want to remind our listeners to re-listen to this podcast. And you will, miss, you will have missed things. We all do. That's why people listen to records over and over again because they want to hear it again because they've missed something or when they watch movies over and over again. So re-listen to this and share it with anyone you know, men and women alike. And please give this podcast and our guest, Jennifer Noel Taylor, a five-star review on iTunes. The better the review you can give to Jennifer, the more people will listen and will benefit from her experiences about money especially. And thirdly, go to my website, askjoannevictoria.com, and you can download a free book that I have there. It's called The True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life. It's free, okay, people? It's just free. It's an ebook, PDF, whatever you think you want to call it, but it's called The True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life. Again, I want to thank Jennifer Noel Taylor for being here. Her book spiritualandbroke.com, free, four free chapters. You can't ask for anything more from 30 minutes of your time. Thanks, everybody, and I appreciate you being here, Jennifer. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com and continue the conversation on my podcast page and get a free copy of my book, The True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.